Okay, in our video now, we're going to be talking about the Hardy-Weinberg principle. And this is something that can be used to help us figure out if a population is undergoing evolutionary change in allele frequency changes. So evolution involves changes in the frequency of alleles in, popu in a population. I'm going to start off just by showing you the two equations, and it's pretty easy math. And then I'm going to show you how we got these equations. So the equations are pretty easy, just P plus Q equals to 1. And another one, which is P squared plus 2PQ plus Q squared equals to 1. And in this case, P and Q represent the dominant and recessive allele. So we're talking about uh, a specific gene, two forms of that gene. So P actually represents the frequency of the dominant allele. So the total percentage of the alleles that are that are present that are actually the dominant form. And then Q represents the frequency of the recessive allele. That's easy enough to understand. When we break this down, maybe I should show you how this is derived first. So let's use the eye color example, which is totally wrong, but it doesn't matter. Big B is a dominant allele that is the allele for brown eyes, brown eyes, and little b is for blue eyes. And you know that you, as an individual, you have a genotype of either big B, big B, big B, little b, or little b, little b, understanding that you only have blue eyes when you have two copies of the recessive allele because the dominant form is not present. So if we do a Punnett square, this is, this is a Punnett square. Ignore this question for now. <clears throat> Here's a Punnett square. These are two individuals that are heterozygous. And obviously, if I cross these together, I end up with big B, big B. Sorry for the ugly handwriting. You can have big B, little b, big B, little b, and little b, little b. So the proportions underneath here will total to 100%. So I can say that, well, 50% of the population is going to have a heterozygous relationship, a heterozygous genotype. 25% is going to have homozygous dominant, and 25% is going to have homozygous recessive. Now, if I just replace these letters, big B and little b, with some generic letters, which are P and Q, which is what is used in the Hardy-Weinberg principle, you can see if I have P and P multiplied together, that becomes P squared. So that represents, P squared represents the proportion of individuals that are homozygous dominant. If I do P and Q, then I get P times Q, that's PQ. And here's another PQ. So PQ represents the individuals that are heterozygous. And in this case, there are two of them, two of them. So I can call that 2PQ. And then Q and Q makes Q squared. If the total proportion underneath here is equal to 100%, then I can derive an equation, which is where this comes from. Everything in these boxes, P squared plus PQ plus another PQ, which is 2PQ plus Q squared equals 1. And so from this, I can conclude the following, that P squared represents the frequency of individuals with a homozygous dominant genotype, 2PQ represents the frequency of individuals with a heterozygous genotype, and Q squared represents the frequency of individuals with a homozygous recessive genotype. So this is all well and good, but how do we actually use this in various types of calculations? So I'm going to demonstrate that using a little practice question down here. Uh, one thing to keep in mind, frequency, you should try to always express it as a decimal because, you know, 1, if this is 0.25 plus 0.5 plus 0.25, that equals to 1. And here you have the total 1, P plus Q equals 1. So the frequency of the dominant allele is 60%, that would be 0.6, and then Q would be 1 minus 0.6, which is 0 0.4. So here's a question, and the question is this. Um, and I have all the work down here, but I'm going to go through this in a second with you. So the important thing is to try to figure out what numbers represent which parts of these two equations, and then to just do some rearranging to solve for what the question is asking for. So the ability to taste a chemical called PTC is controlled by a dominant allele. So we can present anything we want to use. So dominant allele T means ability means ability to taste PTC. So big T equals taster, which I'll represent as P. Non-tasting is due to the recessive allele, little t. So little t means non-taster, which is going to be Q in my case here. In a population of 100 Japanese people, and this is a nice number to work with. If the question 
questions will usually give you a nice number like this or 100 or 1000 so you can easily understand the percentages but if they give you something weird like 350 then you just have to make sure you're express expressing the total number in of individuals as a proportion of that total population number if you understand what i'm saying so in a population of 100 japanese people 36 people are non tasters 36 people are non tasters so i have to understand what does non taster mean a non taster has to be somebody who is little t little t right if they're big t little t they'll be tasters so in this case they're telling me 36 people are non tasters so 36 out of 100 people or point 36 people 36 out of 100 people or 0.36 people are non tasters because I've figured out that non tasting individuals have to have the genotype little t little t so that's actually represented by q squared right little t little t this would be big t big t this would be two times big t little t's but I'm only given information I've only been given information about the proportion of people who are non tasters so I can conclude that 0.36 is actually what q squared represents so if q squared is equal to a 0.36, then I'm ready to go. Now let's find out what the question is asking. The question asks, how many people are heterozygous for the ability to taste PTC? Heterozygous proportion would have to be this, 2PQ. So I really want to calculate 2PQ. And what I know is that q squared equals 0 0.36. So now it's just a simple matter of calculating what p is and then filling it in into 2pq so it's pretty basic math but just in case uh, q squared is 0 0.36 so q is going to be the square root of 0 0.36 which happens to be 0 0.6 if q is 0 0.6 i can solve for p because p plus q equals 0 0.1 so if q is 0 0.6 then p is 0 0.4 i haven't shown i haven't done the math for that but hopefully you see that this plus this equals to one so p is 0.4 now i just need to solve for 2pq so 2pq is 2 times 0.6 times 0.4 ends up being a frequency of 0.48 i'm not done i can't just give 0.48 as the answer because it asks me how many people but because it was a 100 people i know that 0.48 of 100 people is actually 48 people okay not so difficult to solve as long as you can figure out, think of like other genetics problems, you just have to figure out the phenotype and the genotype. In these types of Hardy-Weinberg questions, you need to figure out what numbers are they actually giving you. Are they providing you with P? Are they providing you with Q, P squared, 2PQ, or Q squared? And then from there, there's always going to be enough information to figure out what the, all the other values are. So that's the only challenge is analyzing these particular and analyzing these particular questions. So one final thing is that Hardy Weinberg assumes that certain things are happening. And if things are not fitting Hardy Weinberg, then you can assume that one of these things might be might be kind of strange. OK, so random mating population is large enough that there's going to be, you know, uh, no like, kind of inbreeding effects basically uh, random mating people aren't really choosing their actual mates no migration no new individuals no new frogs are moving into this particular pond that there are no mutations actually happening and that natural selection is not occurring so if we assume all of this is true then we can use the hardy weinberg equi equilibrium to try and solve for allele frequencies basically but at any given time in a population, most of this stuff is going on, right? There are mutations happening, random mating is actually happening, right? Birds are selecting mates, humans are selecting mates for various features, and natural selection is probably occurring. There may be very small populations. I'm in a pond with some fish. There's going to be some inbreeding that's going on there. But this is something that is used to help determine if a population is undergoing any kind of uh, evolution and changes in allele frequencies. So you can study this, these changes over time and try to estimate in an ideal situation what the current proportions of these alleles would be. There are lots of practice questions available online, so go ahead and check them out. That was a discussion of the Hardy-Weinberg principle.